the two videos in this topic, we're going to lay some of the basic groundworks of communication. This will allow us to build on this and present some of our bigger topics later, for example, how to transmit data over the internet. In this first video, we're going to define serial and parallel transmission, synchronous and asynchronous transmission, and describe the purpose of start and stop bits in asynchronous data transmission. So first, when we send data, we can do it in one of two ways. We can either send it in a serial way, which is shown here, and in this method, bits are sent one after the other over a single wire from source to destination. Or we can send information using parallel transmission. Now here, multiple bits are sent simultaneously over parallel wires from the source to the destination. Now at first glance, it would seem that parallel transmission is the preferred method, as we can obviously send more data at once. But the situation is not quite as simple as this. As these are actual physical wires, every single one of these has slightly different properties and slightly different resistances. There's a possibility that the bits could actually arrive at different times. Now this problem is known as skew. The upshot of this is that parallel transmission is only used over short distances. Typically we find tra parallel transmission happening inside a computer system, for example in integrated circuits and within the random access memory. There's also several other major advantages to serial transmission over parallel which you need to be aware of your exam. As we just pointed out, the problem of skew in parallel wires means that transmission using parallel methods is very unreliable over about 2 metres. Serial, however, is reliable over much longer cabling distances. Serial transmission also tends to be cheaper, and this is because there's much less complexity in the connections, and also the physical size of the cables are smaller, and of course this results in lower costs. Parallel wires can suffer from something we call crosstalk, and this is interference between the different lines. This interference obviously can result in data corruption. The stronger the signal, the worse the problem becomes. And again, this is largely avoided with serial transmission. Serial transmission suffers from little interference at high frequencies. As a result, the signal frequency can be much higher than with parallel transmission, and of course, the result of this is net data transfer rates are higher. Along with the concept of serial and data transmission, we also can talk about data being sent using synchronous or asynchronous transition methods. So we'll start with synchronous. Here, data is transferred at regular intervals. There's a, some kind of synchronisation, usually automated by a computer's clock pulse. Parallel communication often makes use of this synchronous transmission method. Now it's really useful for reliable, real-time and time-sensitive data, the sort of thing that happens when you're doing real-time voice over IP, video conferencing and chat. Okay, so here we see asynchronous transmission, and with this method, each byte is sent separately. They are sent as soon as they are ready. We don't wait this time for a synchronisation pulse from a clock signal. Now, in this abstraction here, we can see an ASCII character Y is being transmitted, and we transmit it along with a parity bit, and we covered parity bits in a separate video, uh, but we also, very importantly, have to send it with what's called a start and a stop bit. So in this abstraction, we're sending 10 bits of data to transmit the character Y. This start and stop bit allows the receiving computer a way of knowing when new data has arrived and also provides a short gap between bits of data to prepare for the arrival of the next one. Now, typically in reality, this stop bit tends to be a stop period. It's longer than uh, the reception of a single bit of data. 